Well, welcome to your first online mandolin lesson in the beginning mandolin class. Uh, I hope by now you've all read the syllabus. I hope you've explored the Blackboard site and seen the documents that were available for you. And uh, you might want to pay particular attention to the care of your instrument. And there's a parts diagram on there too. We'll go over the parts right now and talk about tuning a little bit before I show you your first three chords. So let's get started. This is a mandolin of what they call the A variety. It's got the rounded shape instead of the more traditional Gibson F shape. This one has F holes on the soundboard, which is this part right here that vibrates when you play it. Uh, other mandolins will have a round sound hole instead of the F holes. I've seen some that are even oblong in shape, but they all play identically. The, starting from the bottom, we have the tailpiece, and there's a little strap hook on here to hold your strap with. The tailpiece holds the strings in place. I've got it uncovered right now so that you can see how the strings go down and they're on the hooks. And coming further up we've got the bridge and saddle combination which is adjustable for height so that you can get perfect intonation which we'll talk about quite some time later. Then we have the neck which sits on the body and the neck has these little wires in it that we call fret wires. And some of them have dots on them for locating where you're at on the neck. And the spaces in between the fret wires are called frets. So when you hear me refer to the second fret, for instance, it's going to be this space right here between the second and third fret wire. Then we have the nut up here, which is a slotted piece of either bone or plastic that the strings fit in to guide them down to the bridge. And then you have the headstock, which is this whole arrangement up here that has the tuning pegs on it and the string hold, string keepers. I want you to pay close attention to how the strings come off of the nut into these little pegs. As you go down the mandolin from the left side to the right or from the top to the bottom, you start going up the pegs for each string. So the first four strings or two pair are located on this side. And then as you get to, <coughs> excuse me, to the last two pair, there are four more coming down. So pay attention to that so that when you're tuning your instrument, you're turning the right peg for the string you're trying to tune. Okay, and take a look at the back of it. Some of these geared tuners are covered, some of them are not. In my particular case, they are not covered. Some mandolins have separate ones. Mine are all on one strip of metal, which I kind of like better, but if you have to replace a couple of them, you can do the whole thing at once. And the the inlaid piece of pearl or plastic that goes around the outside of the body is called the binding, and that is all the parts of the mandolin we're going to talk about. So the next thing we'll talk about today is tuning your mandolin. You can tune it by ear listening to me play, or you can use one of these little handy chromatic tuners. They don't cost very much. Um, I think I paid seven or eight dollars for this one. It's a Fender, and usually you just turn them on with one button. And if you have a choice on the bottom, you want to keep pressing the button until it says C for chromatic scale. But if that's giving you difficulties, we'll talk about that later and you can email me and let me know. And what happens is when you hit a string that's not in tune, I'll, I'll tune this first one down a little bit. It stays blue or whatever the background color of your screen is and it's, there's a little arrow or needle design on here that doesn't quite come up to that G note that I'm wanting to tune to. So as I tune it up, it'll turn green and that arrow hits the center just like that. But you can also listen to it too. And then you tune the very next string in that pair to that same note. That one's a little high, so I'm backing it off a little bit until they're both green and centered on the arrow. Then we go to our next string, which is tuned to D. You can see from the tuner that's fairly close, and you can listen to yours as I'm playing it. I need to bring it up just a little bit by turning the tuning peg. Then I go to the next string. Remember, you're looking for green and centered, that needle in the center green or that it sounds just like the other D string that I'm hitting. Both of these sound identical now. And we go 
to the next string down, which is the A string, and now we're on the other side of the neck. We're on the other side of the headstock tuning with these tuners. That's an A, and it looks like it's perfect. I got lucky with that one. But that next A string right beside it is not close at all, so we're gonna have to bring that up. perfect or you can just listen to it until they sound identical if you're doing this by ear it should sound like what you're hearing as you play this video then you go to the final string which is the E string And then because the neck on a mandolin is so short and it has so much stress on it, you can go back and check and sometimes the earlier strings that you tune will be a little bit out of tune when you get done. So you go back through one more time. G-D-A-E. It doesn't really spell a word, does it? So I like the Australian greeting of the day when they say G'day to each other, which is the only thing you could possibly spell with those four letters. And so from the bottom to the top, G'day. G-D-A-E. And if you need to retune your mandolin, if it doesn't sound quite right when you strum it or when you play in the chords later, you can come back to this part of the video and replay it and tune it. I'll go back through the strings one at a time for those of you that are listening and tuning by ear from G down to E. Here's the G string. The D string. The A string. So now our mandolin's in tune, what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna play some simple chords. Today you're going to learn a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord. And I want you to practice those until your next lesson. And I want you to practice them at least 20 to 30 minutes a day because you're gonna find that when you press down on these strings, your fingers aren't used to that sensation of pressing down on a piece of metal that's being held by a piece of wood and you need to get your fingers used to that. You'll get some little calluses on the tips of your fingers doing this, and that will really help you in your mandolin playing. So we're gonna start you with a G chord. It makes all kind of sense to me if we're gonna play a G chord that our G string should be played. Right, okay. So to play the rest of the G chord, you need these two fingers, your first finger and your second finger. You're gonna put your second finger on the third fret that's in between these two fret wires, there's a dot on your mandolin, more than likely, to show you where to put it, of the bottom string or the E string. So that one goes on the third fret of the E string. Your index finger or pointer goes on the second fret, right above it. That's a really easy chord to make because your fingers are right there together. If you get one of the fingers right and your fingers are touching, you'll have the other one right. And that one goes on the second fret of the A string. So the top two strings are played without fretting. They're played open, and the bottom two strings are played at the second and third fret. And just strum that. Don't even worry about holding your pick any particular way right now. Just strum that eight times every time you do it. Eight. It should sound very similar to what I'm doing. If you're not hearing those bottom two strings, if they sound kind of clicky like that, you need to press harder until you actually hear the notes. Strum it eight times. And that is the G chord. Come back to this point in the video as much as you want to. Remember, it's the third fret and the second fret of the bottom two strings, the E string and the A string. 
You're going to like a C chord just as much because all you have to do for the C chord is move those two fingers up one string each. So you move this finger up to the third fret of the A string and you move this finger up to the second fret of the D string. So you just went from here to here. I'll show you that again. Here's your G chord. To play the C chord, you just move in one string or move up towards your face one string. The fingers stay in that same relationship, second and third fret. Eight times. Third fret of the A string, second fret of the D string. If you can't hear that bottom string because your finger's touching it, that's okay for right now. We'll adjust your finger technique a little bit later. So you have the G chord on the bottom two strings. And you have the C chord on the middle two strings. We need one more chord to play our songs with, so we're going to play a D chord. The D chord uses the same two fingers, but it uses them on the top and bottom string. So you're going to play the E string and the G string, and you're going to play them both at the second fret. So you put your middle finger on the second fret of the bottom string or E string, and you put your pointer finger on the top string at the second fret. So they're right across from each other, and the two center strings are open. And this is a D chord. So what I want you to practice, I want you to play three G chords, that's the two bottom strings, play eight of those. G chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then go to the D chord. That's the two outer strings of the second fret. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm just going to play those chords in that order and count it off, and you can try to play along with me, and you can come back to this point in the video anytime you want to. that's enough for you to practice on for the next week or 10 days or so until we get to our second lesson. You can always pull this video back up and look at it. There's a page of notes that accompanies this. It's called Video Lesson 1 Notes. That'll be on the website too. And I thank you for attending class virtually today and we'll see you next time.